When it comes to Bleach, you forced Nirvana to change the track listing for that record. Originally, Kurt wanted to have Blue and About a Girl deeper down on the track listing, but you insisted that those songs had to be higher up, correct? Absolutely, yeah. I'm really, I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of that because Kurt, again, we would we'd butt heads a little bit, but I thought it was it was healthy. You know, he was he was pretty stubborn. He had, you know, he goes, we're not doing a Charles Peterson photo on the cover. My girlfriend's got this shot. We want to do it negative. I'm like, oh, that's cool, you know. But I'm telling him the sequence of your record is not going to work, my friend. You're taking your two best songs, Blue and About a Girl, and you're putting them on the end of side two. Maybe if you're R.E.M. you can get away with that, but you're a new band. You need to come out swinging. And then oftentimes the third the third track on your record is going to be the pop hit, the one with the hook that really gets people. So between Blue and About a Girl, we, we put it up front, and uh, I was really firm about that. I said, I'm not budging on that. And so they had to go in and re-splice the whole thing, and Kurt was kind of like upset that I was this authority figure who was telling him what to do. But I'm like, look... I've been in this business for a while, and trust me, this is good advice. So I'm not going to budge on that. So we did have a little back and forth there. Uh, hey, but it worked out. It worked, it worked out. out. I yeah. I stand by that sequence. I think opening up with blue would just kills it. Uh, FYI, just as a, a, a an anecdote, I was in Oslo, Norway, late February, at uh, a music conference there. And part of the music conference is they have this classic album, Sunday. So they invited me in, and we listened to Bleach on a stereo system that they told me was worth $100,000. It was like the finest gear in the world. I hadn't heard of any of this stuff. I'm not an audiophile. But we were in basically a pub or a tavern with 100 Norwegians drinking strong beer and listening to Bleach. It was a moment, but dropping that needle and hearing blue, the, those bass lines, people were just down as soon as it, it dropped. Still holds up. 100%. And with specific regards to About a Girl, one of the things that I find interesting about the story of that song is the fact that Kurt was a bit apprehensive to put the song out there because he was concerned it may alienate his grunge audience, even though Jack and Dino told me that Kurt wanted to record the song. So he was clearly a little bit conflicted about the song. In your experience, did you ever find that he was apprehensive about about a girl? A, a little bit, and you know, of the in this sub pop organization, John had more of the he was more interested in in pop songwriting. It's one of the things that made the label kind of interesting, and I was I was more interested in, in like tracks like Blue was probably my favorite, and About a Girl was John's favorite. And John was going, you know, Kurt is telling me he's listening to like a lot of Beatles. And the direction the the band might go is just more of a pop sensibility. And, you know, I'm open-minded. I thought, yeah, that's that's cool. I thought About a Girl was a gr great song. But he also told me that Kurt was a, feeling a little self-conscious because he wanted to go in a popier direction. So in terms of that more, I suppose, poppy, polished direction, what did you think about the production on Nevermind? I, the production, you know, Butch Vig wound up uh, re-recording the record in LA and then Andy Wallace wound up mixing it. So it, it had a, I love the production on, uh, Nevermind. They thought it was maybe a little too, too shiny, a little too commercial, but I think that's one of the things that made it so great. It's just everything came together, pop, noise, punk, you know, they, we, if they had stuck with Sub Pop, we would have released the original, uh, Butch Vig recordings. And, and frankly, they just weren't as good as as what finally came out, you know. But I'm glad they wound up working with Butch because he's super, super skilled. Do you have a relationship with Butch Fig? I would say so. You know, I bumped into him at a music conference in Chicago a couple, couple years ago. Super nice guy. Also, Dave Grohl had put together a documentary series about different regional scenes. And they came to Seattle and and did an epic show at the Showbox for like three or four hours promoting their involvement with his documentary. I saw Butch backstage there and he's just a super nice guy, super nice guy and really, really talented. Definitely. Now, Nevermind, of course, was released by DGC and because of the contract you have with them, Sub Pop got substantial royalties from the sales of both Nevermind and In Utero, which in your own words, basically saved the company from going under. 
But even before that, if you look at the history of Sub Pop prior to Nevermind, you guys had sold hundreds of thousands of records as a label. So given Sub Pop's success, how come you guys were on that verge of going under at that point in time? It's just, it's a never-ending... You know, you got employees and you're hiring more employees. And we, you know, we started out, I was calling the press, I was calling the radio. Then we hired somebody to do press, somebody to do radio. You expand, you expand, you expand more bands. Oh, they need advances. Oh, okay. Now they need vans. And so you're, we, and you never know how much money is going to be coming in because distributors may go out of business. They may not pay you. The record may not sell as much as you thought. So it's an incredibly unstable business where you're shooting from the hip all the time. And at the end of the day, when we finally like that moment when we couldn't, I couldn't come up, we could, I could barely come up with a hundred bucks. We were probably like $200,000 in debt, which in the grand scheme of things is really not that, that bad. We just didn't have any credit, right? We had no credit we just we just owed everybody in town money, and as soon as that Nirvana money came in, we paid those bills like that. So to to do what we did, running on fumes was was a constant exercise in trying to be resourceful. And again, a, a, you know, just to reemphasize a fact that a lot of people don't take into consideration is that at that time there'd be like six or seven record distributors, and every year one of them would go out of business, and then somebody new would come in. And so you wouldn't get that cash, okay? So that's one of the reasons we started selling directly to, to stores and stuff. It was hard to get paid, totally crazy. You never knew if you're going to have a hit record, and I would never do it again in a million years, but I'm glad I did it once. Looking back at your career with Sub Pop, what are some of your favorite memories? That's a good question. You know, I think there's so many layers to it. Seeing Nevermind go to number one and knock Michael Jackson off the charts. And, you know, it's got the Sub Pop logo on the back and the label sending us millions of dollars and the bands on Saturday Night Live. It's just, it was like for people in indie rock, it was like, I, I say it's like the fall of the Berlin Wall. You know, the fact that a band could go from the indie culture straight up to number one was a miracle that people have been praying for ever since like the punk rock culture happened in the late seventies and it hadn't happened. So that, that might be the moment, but there are a lot of minor moments too. Just the success of the singles club and Sony records spray painting their door. And, you know, there's just a lot of weird little highlights, but Nirvana, never mind going to number one is probably it. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe for more. All the videos on this channel are original. I'm the one conducting all the interviews and editing all the videos together. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Lots more to come.